Thank you, Beth. That was beautiful. Um, welcome to First Christian Church this morning. Um, I'm uh, Jason, one of the ministers here at the church. I did want to, uh, we had a quick announcement we need to make. Come on up, Miss Kim. We're going to talk about some graduates and some other things. Good morning. I have two dates, so if you have your pens and papers, get ready to write these dates down. It was up on the monitor, but May 16th, Sunday, directly after church, we will have a senior recognition day. We have three seniors this year, Michael Lloyd, Spencer Wells, and Rihanna Smith. So we'll have three graduates that we will uh, celebrate that day. We will have a meal right after church. Uh, women's Bible study, we had our third meeting yesterday. Um, we're having a, a good fellowship. We're having a light breakfast. And then we... Uh, have been going through the book of James. And so our next meeting is May 22nd, and it's Saturday morning, and that is from 9 a.m. to 1030. We would love for all of our sisters here to join us. Um, it's a great time of fellowship and then a uh, little fun going through some, some lessons from James. Uh, this summer, we're going to continue to meet, and we will go through the women, some of the women of the Bible. So we hope you'll join us. Thank you. And we're hoping to get Brandon Pickle up here for a, a senior day, too. Um, also, um, uh, we're glad to have Mr. Blake here with us this morning. Everybody say hi, Blake. Hi, Blake. <laughs> Blake. 
We've all been praying for you, buddy, so we're glad to see you here this morning. So as our worship team comes up, I'm going to open us in a word of prayer. So is there anything I'm forgetting? Okay, yeah, why don't you come do that, Crystal, while our worship team's coming. Oh, okay. So I was going to go ahead and give you guys a real quick update. Um, I've been talking to Ari this weekend, as you guys can see. Blake's here with us this morning. Um, uh, he does go back to St. Jude next week, a week from today. So, um, But we're still praying that he gains weight. That's where we got to go. we got to get up to 38 pounds. We're at 28 and a half pounds right now. So um, y'all just keep praying with us on that, okay? And those of you that have already given and have helped them out, thank you so much. If you feel led to do anything, just holler at me. Um, we do have a GoFundMe thing that I shared on our church Facebook page. Uh, so you can always find stuff on there. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. Okay. Oh, Blake is a special guy to our church and our children's program. And um, he's got quite a problem. He sits around and he eats and eats and eats and doesn't gain any weight. How about that? <laughs> so uh, we uh, wish we could be like you in that regard, Mr. Blake. So let's pray, okay? Would you pray with me? Lord, we want to give you this time ahead of us right now. There's a lot of things on our mind. A lot of people we care about are uh, having some struggles. Lord, a lot of things that maybe work or at home are just really wanting our attention. But Lord, would you help us be able to focus just for the short time that we're here together this morning. We just want to give you this time. We offer it to you. We're going to be intentional about focusing on you and worshiping. We thank you for all of our wonderful singers and musicians who are willing week after week to come and lead us in these songs. And Lord, we just pray that our heart would worship you as we sing these songs this morning. And as we open your word together, again, we just ask that you might minister to us through it. Lord, we just give you this time. We're very thankful for you and all that you've done in your son, Jesus. And we ask it in his name. Amen. Would you stand with us? Well, my name is Burl. I'm the worship leader here. And I uh, just want you to sing along with us. Uh, remember last week I kind of talked about uh, who our audience is. And it's not you. <laughs> it's God. We are all worship leaders, worship singers. Uh, this morning, and God is the one we, we sing to. In fact, Psalm 22, 2, I think, 22, 3 says that uh, God inhabits the praises of his people. That means he's, he's kind of sniffing around up there, and when he sniffs out somebody praising him, I mean, he gets in on it. And uh, when we truly put our hearts in it, when, he, when, when he's the focus of our attention, then he shows up. I've been waiting a long time to see that. You know, I believe it, but I've yet to see a people as a group totally into that yet. You know, I think whenever we do, though, God's going to show up. He sure did a lot in the in the Bible. But anyway, uh, but sing along with us. Sun the land morning, man.
Yeah, I'll tell you what. Love it, love it, love it. There's a place in the Bible where it, uh, okay, y'all can be seated. Uh, <laughs> there's a place in the Bible where it talks, I think it's in Chronicles. I'm going to have to look it up before I get up here and then I forgot. But I think it's in Chronicles. Israel, again, was in a mess. You know, they had Syrians surrounding them all over the place. And a uh, big army. And Hez I believe it's Hezekiah. Hezekiah, he was king and he didn't know what to do. So they prayed and they prayed, and finally they figured out and they got a word from the prophet. And you know, sometimes prophets, you know, you don't know whether they're kind of on the, you know, you don't know where they're at sometimes. But anyway, this prophet said, Here's what the Lord says Send out the singers first. Now, I don't know if they wanted to get rid of the singers or not, but they decided to send out the singers first. Singers started going out there, started singing psalms and hymns and all the stuff that. They knew and singing to the Lord, and that army went nuts. You know, I guess it could be maybe they were singing off key. I don't know, but anyway, the army out there just went nuts, started killing each other. You know, and before the, before Israel's army could even get there, that whole Syrian army had basically destroyed themselves. You know, there's something to the power of praise. There's something to hearts that are tuned to God and giving Him His rightful place. And not doubting, you know. And that's kind of where, where this song kind of came from. You know, it's, uh, talking about raising a hallelujah to Him in the presence of our enemies. You know, whenever things get down, whenever things, whenever the trouble comes, giving Him the praise, kind of like James says. You know, where he talks about uh, when things are going bad, you know, throw a party. You know, it's what kind of says in James one. You know. Uh, I'll, sh I'll shut up and let's sing. I raise a hallelujah. Let's 
in the road and then just listen to, to your leading and then do it your way. Oh, the peace that passes all understanding. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Lord, I know that's my heart's desire is to keep focused on you. Not to be so heavenly minded I'm no earthly good, but just keep focused 
as I work through the day, as the time goes on, Lord, I just pray that uh, we will all just tend to Scripture and, and uh, see what you have for us. And Father, as we've sung, as, we, as we've lifted up these, these songs to you, I just uh, pray that the words that we've said, the meditations of our heart have been acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Uh, if you want to find your communion cup and get that prepared, um, we did have some news come in this morning. Uh, many of you know uh, Dan and Pam Barlow. They were on their way to church this morning, and his brother called and said that their mother was being taken by ambulance. They had an emergency, so. Uh, they rerouted and headed toward uh, Tulsa. So we'll remember um, his, uh, their mom at uh, this moment. So let's pray real quick. And Lord, we just want to, as much as we love uh, our loved ones, Lord, we have friends and church family that also have loved ones all over the place. And Lord, we just ask you to please uh, be with everybody that is um, caring uh, for uh, Dan's mom. We just ask you to help them see everything that they need to see, be able to make good decisions, and that everything would come to life that needs to be done. We just pray uh, for them as they travel also. We ask you, to, Lord, to uh, please uh, uh, take advantage of that situation and bring some good attention to your son Jesus. We ask it in his name. Amen. Um, you know, have you ever seen the words or paid attention to the words on the front of the communion table? What's it say? Yeah, do this and remember to me. You know, we uh, come to the Lord's uh, Supper a lot of times, and rightfully so. We think, well, Jesus told the guys that he was with uh, the closest to and went around with the most. Yeah, this, this was his instructions to them. Hey, whenever you get together and you participate in the supper, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Okay. And uh, a lot of times we look at that and think, well, this is just a, you know, a, a, a mournful time or this or that. But, you know, another thing to think about whenever we come to the Lord's table is to do this in remembrance of Jesus. Yes, because of the sacrifice that he's made. But you know what? That sacrifice purchased something, didn't it? Amen. It didn't just purchase um, something to give us to do here during church on Sundays. His death on the cross purchased something in our future as believers, for believers, not for the entire world, but for those who believe. There is something that is purchased. And sometimes we don't get past what happened on the cross whenever we talk about the Lord's Supper and the Communion. But we need to remember Jesus and remember what he's done on the cross, but remember what it purchased. Amen. That's what we want to do. So I'm just going to give you just a minute to meditate and take your uh, uh, emblems. And then we're going to have a prayer and stand for our doxology. Lord, we just want to uh, remember you. Lord, we want to remember what you've done for us on the cross and the sacrifice that you made and the gift that you gave. And we also recognize and remember the reason you were doing that was to purchase life. And Lord, that is what we look forward to. And that is what we also celebrate in this communion. And Lord, we ask you to take it and uh, in our hearts, as we think about that in Jesus name. Amen.
Okay, well, some of you keep coming back, and it's just Crystal and I every week, and you keep coming back, but that's not a bad thing. I, I don't know what number this is. Uh, let me get this one. Number two. Yeah. Oh, this is three. Okay. All right. Um, if you've got a Bible, I hope you will find one. They're out there. You can get your uh, um, phone if that's what you prefer. We're going to look in the book of Acts this morning. We've got one verse I want to start off uh, reading. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. And we are going to look way down in verse 35. Acts chapter 20, uh, verse 35. If you're able to, why don't you stand with me? We're just going to read, uh, honor God's word as we read it. We're going to pause just a minute. And we're going to hear the word of the Lord. Acts chapter 20 and verse 35. Hear the word of the Lord. In every way, I've shown you that it is necessary to help the weak by laboring like this. And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. Because he said, it is more blessed to give than to what? Receive. Lord, we just... We know this is true. Uh, help us think about this today and what you've given us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. All right. How are you this morning? <laughs> Any, anybody else do that? You get up and half your day is gone, and then you ask your uh, spouse, <laughs> how's it going today? You know? that, uh, anybody else, it seems like you, you just don't get to talk enough. You just catch each other running, meet each other, going from uh, project to project, right? That's kind of how it's been. So, Crystal and I, we've got a, uh, we've been doing a series on the five love languages of uh, that Gary, Dr. Gary Chapman. After many, many decades of counseling, he was counseling couples, but this doesn't apply to couples, which he discovered later. Um, Everybody, he, what he found out was the people were, that were complaining in uh, the couple's counseling, they were complaining that, hey, I am not feeling loved by my spouse. And uh, what he ended up finding, he went back and looked at two years of research, and he found out that um, all the complaints landed in five categories. And they were complaining about, uh, that's what's come known as the five love languages. Okay, a love language is something that somebody, a, a language that somebody has in which this is how they feel loved. When this happens, I'm feeling loved by you. And so there were five categories that all these complaints landed in. And listen to this. Uh, the first one is words of affirmation. Whenever you are speaking to me, Words of affirmation, encouraging me, lifting me up. I feel loved. That's somebody's love language. Most people just have one, maybe two that are close, but not more than that. Uh, another one is quality time. In other words, I am choosing you over whatever else is going on. You get this time for me. You have my attention. That speaks love to some people. Um, another one is uh, receiving gifts, which we're going to talk about today, okay? Receiving gifts. In other words, just a token of somebody's love or appreciation or thoughtfulness. Um, acts of service is another one. It's not just saying, yes, I love you, but hey, show me. Help me around the house. Help me do this. Help me do that. You know, uh, don't do it for me. I want you to do it with me. Um, she's nodding her head because we're going to talk about that next week. And she really likes that one. <laughs> uh, physical touch. Uh, physical touch is the last one. And this is, you know, nothing more than some uh, expression of love towards somebody, you know, with a pat on the back or rubbing of the shoulders, holding hands, something, some physical touch. So those are the five things that he identified. And the truth is, that God has wired us all in some way so that you have a primary love language. And we're trying to go through these. And here's the reason I want to go through these as a church body. 
It's not for marriages because every one of us, we all have all relationships with different people. I want to relate to you better and you want to relate to me better so we can have more unity as we do kingdom work together as a church and a body of Christ here in our community. And so we're going through this together because it applies to all of us and our relationships to one another. We want to be strong as we work and do kingdom work here. Oh, sorry. I've got to bring this thing up here. So how did your week go um, sharing quality time with people? Were you able to break away and uh, give someone some of that undivided attention? Did you have some positive responses from that? Did you finally find out maybe somebody that, that is their love language and, uh, and received a, spot, a positive response from them in that way? I don't know. Y'all can share or not. I don't know. Nod your head. <laughs> Somebody? Yeah. As Christians, um, this is how we can love others. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this week, we're going to talk about giving gifts and receiving gifts. This is one of Jason's love languages. Yeah, this is my primary love language. And so I'll tell you what kind of vehicles I like. I'll tell you what kind of fishing poles and guns I like. Okay? I After service, just get with me. I don't speak this language very well to him sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, this is not her love language. Um, that, that's okay. That's no big deal. So uh, here's what. What is giving and receiving of gifts? What is that? Well, it, it's an act of giving or receiving something that's thoughtful and something that is heartfelt. Okay? This isn't uh, necessarily something that's expensive or impressive or something that's really going to make somebody say, wow, that's not, that's not the uh, purpose of it. The purpose of it is, hey, I was thinking of you when I got this. That's the purpose of it. That's what fills me up uh, with my love language. So people with this love language are pretty easy to spot. Um, they usually make a big deal over special occasions. Okay? You got a birthday coming up? Whoop, got to do something. We got to have some kind of gift. You got an anniversary. You got this. You got that. You know, I mean, people with this love language, they look for any opportunity, you know, to give some, something that would be meaningful, you know. And so uh, we, we'll make up any reason, any excuse, any occasion, <laughs> anything's an occasion to do this. Yeah, pretty much any occasion is a good reason to give a gift for this type of person. And Jason is really good at this. Um, he's always looking for reasons to, to share and to love on others in that way. And sometimes I'm like, why? You know, but, anyway, <laughs> but, but it, he, he really enjoys it. Yeah, I, I can tell you, if this is not your love language, okay, if this is not your love language, it makes no sense to you. And I, I understand that and I accept that, okay? Um, for instance, uh, um, years ago, um, Crystal and I, we bought a used truck off my brother in uh, 98 or 99, something like that. And I drove it up until 2015 or something like that. No? Yeah. Yeah. 2014, 15. Long time. I just drove it, you know. And it was just a single cab F-150 truck. Wasn't nothing special about it. We liked it and it was our deal. Anyway, uh, the kids got too big for us to all sit in the seat. <laughs> and so... I got to looking around, and I found uh, the truck that Micah drives now, and and uh, I went down to uh, our insurance agent, which they done in-house uh, vehicle loans. And so I went down there, and, and the girl's like, yeah, yeah, you know, we can do all this and that. Well, I, I bugged her going back and forth. How much is this? How much is that for like a week and a half? Anyway, I finally uh, got uh, the vehicle loan for what little bit I was going to borrow on it, and I was so thankful and so appreciative that I just went and got her just a little $10 coffee card and took it to her. And I just said, Hey, thank you so much. This is awesome. This is the first truck I've had in forever and all this and that. And she looked at me across the desk and she thought, what in the world are you doing? <laughs> you know, I'm just doing my job, you know, or whatever expression was. And I was like, listen, it may be weird, but anyway, I appreciate it. You know? So if it's not your love language, you're going to be thinking, Oh my God, Gosh, I mean, there's a hole in their pocket, you know, with their wallet, you know, money's just leaking out or whatever the case is. Now, what we're doing is we're just expressing love and appreciation to people. Kind of like the McDonald's thing when you go through the drive-thru and somebody buys your, 
your meal or whatever before you, and then you think, well, do I have to buy the next person? Didn't you talk about this like a few weeks ago? Yes, yeah. And what I do now is I say, hey, I want to buy this little old lady's behind me, but tell her that she doesn't have to do that. Yeah. So I do add that now, okay? So that makes it a little bit better, right? But it is sweet whenever you do get that gift. That, that's happened to me a couple of times, and I've done it myself for others too. Um, it's not the cost, but it's the thought behind it. That's what, that's what really means. You know, you don't have to go out and spend a million dollars. Not many of us, we don't, oh, sorry, we don't have a million dollars to spend. So it's really the thought that you put into it. And for someone that has this love language, that means a lot. Yeah, that, that really is the distinction. Think about this for a second. It could be something that you have at your home that means something to you that's not going to cost anything, but hey, it may be, I was thinking of you whenever I want to give you this gift. Um, I know that uh, Sherry, uh, whenever we came to church here, I've got this hideous lamp on my desk if you've uh, never been in my office, okay? It's hideous, but I wanted at a, a, a white elephant gift a Santa party at, at How at our church there. And so I brought it because, hey, it was uh, from one of the ladies there that I care about. It is anyway, Miss Sherry, bless her heart. She was like, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I don't know if that lamp means anything to you or not, but here you go. And she gave me a lamp. And, and to nobody else, it didn't mean anything. It was a lamp. But you know what? To me, it told me that she was thinking about me and that she loved me. And it filled me up. Made me feel great, and I took the lamp home, and I use it every day in my office. And so, uh, because it means something to me, so it's not ever going to get discarded or anything like that. And so, it's not really about the expense, okay? It's really about, you know, I was thinking of you. And so, that, that's what really makes the distinction. You know, it could be something that you already have that you can make, a cake, an heirloom, anything, or a song. Um, on Jason and I, was it 20? anniversary he wrote me a beautiful song and um and and that to me was very special and even in years before that he would give me gift card or not gift cards but cards and he would write these beautiful notes in them and at first because this isn't my love language i thought why are you giving me this card with this big old long you know letter in it you know but but it meant a lot um, and it means more now than it did then now that i even understand where he was coming from with it so what fills these people up? You know, um, to receive a thoughtful gift, like you talked about with Sherry, somebody who puts some thought into it, um, a gift that shows them that they are loved and thought about, even when you're not around them. A gift that says, I get you, I understand you, I know you, and I care about you. Yep, I remember uh, Ed Smith. He's not here today. He's probably out in the beautiful sunshine on his bike. But anyway, <laughs> he may not see this, but... Uh, we were talking about cleaning up our vehicles. How many of you like to keep your vehicles clean? Okay. Two people. Seriously, guys. Two people. All right. How many of you like it to be clean if somebody else cleans it? Okay. Now we got more participation. Uh, and we were talking about uh, cleaning our vehicles. And Ed Smith uh, went out to his motorcycle. And he said, hey, come out here. And he gave me a bottle of... Uh, bug and tar remover that was Harley brand. He just gave it to me out of his motorcycle. And to him, it probably didn't mean anything, but you know what? It really blessed my heart. And uh, that stuff's good stuff too, by the way. But um, that may be an occasion. Um, I have uh, one of the deacons over at Howe. He bought me a, a pocket knife. You guys like good knives? Um, yeah. So he bought me a buck knife, and I'd had one before, but you know what? He brought me this knife, and he said, hey, uh, have you ever read the documentation in the case? And I said, no, not really. And he said, why don't you take a look at it? And uh, it was talking about the history of Buck Knives and how they're a, a Christian-owned and founded company and how they want to honor the Lord with their business. And so he was being intentional about giving me this knife because I was his pastor, and he was thinking, hey, this is something that you would get and you would appreciate. And so that right there was important to me. I remember a time where Crystal uh, bought me, uh, brought me an ice cream. 
And you're thinking, ice cream. Well, and she, that's exactly what she thought. She's like, what is this about? Well, I remember one time she didn't call me and ask me. I always ask. Yeah, she uh, asks everything. But uh, she didn't call me and ask me. Um, she just showed up. I was working hard in the office. I was hooked up going to town, and she brought me a strawberry shortcake sundae from Brahms. And I do know that's his favorite. Is anybody else's favorite strawberry shortcake? Yeah. All right. All right. Um, but she brought that to me to her. It was nothing, but to me, it showed, Hey, I was thinking about you and I didn't ask you first. I just did it. And just doing it is a part of showing these people with the love language that you love them, that you're thinking about them, that you care about them, that kind of thing. And she's gotten me, uh, muck boots before by surprise on my 40th birthday. Uh, she got me a guitar, two guitars over the years. And so People with this love language, they, they're going to tend to remember these little things. I don't. Okay? She doesn't remember anything like that. Okay? But people with this love language, they're going to they're gonna tend to remember uh, these gifts that you give them. Okay? And they may not remember every single thing, but for the most part, it's going to mean something to them. Sorry, I don't guys. know. I need to read. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> uh, what fills them up? That's what we're talking about. Um, it fills uh, people up to give them thoughtful gifts when they're appreciated. Now, here's something that was not appreciated that I, that I gave one time. All right. I'm going to show this to you. Now, this right oh, here. Right. Yeah. It was. Uh, I saw that down there and wondered. Yeah. This is not the right brand, but I will explain. Um, it was, uh, January or February, uh, 97 and yeah. And we were, uh, fixing to get married. We were getting married in February and we had our, uh, first, uh, uh, low rent housing, uh, procured and paid for deposit done where, and we were making our very first trip shopping trip together to Wally world. Right. How many of you, that was your first stop <laughs> getting ready to get married. And so we're going and we're getting all of our gear um, to at least be able to live for a little while. And so we get up to the checkout and um, we needed toothpaste. And so I had went and because I wanted her, I love her so much. I wanted her to have the best. I had bought Rembrandt toothpaste and whenever it went beep, it rang up $7 and something <laughs> and think about it we're both in college <laughs> and uh we're trying to get started in our life and beep seven dollars and something on rembrandt toothpaste and she looked at me and she said what no <laughs> what in the world are you thinking but you know i'm going to tell you what i was thinking 24 years later i'm going to admit it i was thinking uh you know what I want her to have the best. And I looked up, and that one there looked like it was the best. It had the best box. And I went to Walmart to find it, and I don't guess they sell it anymore. But either way, Rembrandt toothpaste. Buys it. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably right. But either way, um, what fills these people up is to not just receive, but to also be able to give thoughtful gifts to people. And no, they're not always appreciated or they don't always get it, but that does fill us up, okay? And they show love to others by giving gifts, and they need to be able to give you something that's the best that they can give you, okay? That's important important uh, to us. So what is it that stresses folks like this? You want to touch on that a little bit? Any guesses? What stresses people out? All right, listen, don't re-gift stuff that they give you. Please, for the love of Pete, do not ever re-gift something that somebody with this love language when they give you something. Um, uh, when I started working at uh, the survey office over here in the late 90s, I got to work. I was, hadn't been there that long. I got to work, and I found out it was boss's day. You ever get to work and find out it's boss's day when you're at work? Okay, yeah. Well, it was boss's day that day, and uh, I went down at, at lunchtime, and I got me some lunch at one of the handy stops, and 
my boss had just gotten a Harley. And so he was on this Harley kick and all this. And so I went in the little display case because he always invited me to 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock smoke break. Okay? I didn't smoke, but I got to go just to take a break, you know, and talk or whatever. So in the little uh, carousel, they had a Harley flip lighter. And so I asked them if I could get that, and I took it to him for boss's day, and he said, hey, thanks, that's pretty neat, and he put it in his drawer, <laughs> and he used his little bic <laughs> that he was always using, okay? So what stresses these people out? Listen, whenever they give you something, at least, you know, get... Acknowledge it. Yeah, acknowledge it and uh, show that you appreciate it, okay? Uh, something else that uh, stresses us out, uh, whenever you have to get me something because it's a special occasion, okay, and it's not something that you just do because you're thinking of me or whatever, listen, you don't have to do that, okay? Most people, it's not, it's, it's not the gift. It is the thoughtfulness around it, right? It's behind it. What's going on behind it? And so, uh, so don't do that. Um, the person with this love language, they desire to be known by you, and they want to see that in the gifts that you give them. They want to be known. I'll repeat that if I didn't have my microphone up high enough. Um, the person with this love language, language desires to be known by you and see that you see that in the gifts that you give them. Um, that, that shows love to them. Again, like he said, never re-gift or throw away something because um, it means a lot, and they will know it if you do it. So here's a challenge for this week. This week, I want you to find somebody, think about them, think about somebody that you know, and say, hey, this, this gift says I get you. This is something you like, you appreciate. I was thinking of you when I got this. And I want you to do something very inexpensive or free. Just make a point to do that and see what kind of reaction you get this week. All right? So thank you, Crystal. We appreciate you. Y'all give her a hand. Oh. I want to real quick. Yeah. Um, at the end of services, I'd like for you guys, those of you who'd like to, um, I want to just have a prayer moment for Blake whenever I'm going to have him come back in here. And if you feel led to pray and just uh, pray over him and the, everything that's going on, we do want to take a moment to do that. Uh, yeah, as we service. keep our distance. Yes, as we definitely keep our distance. Yeah. Right. yeah. Thank you. Y'all give Crystal a hand. Thank you, Crystal. I'm going to give that to you. <laughs> Uh, anybody else? Do y'all remember your first uh, shopping experience together? Yeah, can't remember that far back. Huh? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's look. Uh, get your Bible because we're going to finish up here in the uh, last 10 minutes here. We're going to finish up in the scriptures. Okay. Um, how many times can you think of where Jesus gave somebody the perfect gift, exactly what they needed right there at that moment whenever they encountered him. Man, there's tons of things I can think of. Um, you remember the blind man. What did he really want to do? Man, he wanted to see, and Jesus met that need right there. Uh, there was uh, multiple cripples and people who were lame uh, and that kind of thing, and uh, right at that moment, that he needed uh, to give them that, and they needed that. Um, I remember the occasion with the harlot, and he restored her dignity. Isn't that exactly what she needed at that moment? Uh, all those things. And um, I was reading in Mark whenever we were going through the Bible study in the men's group on Monday nights at 6, at six o'clock, so join us. Um, Jesus removed an evil spirit uh, from a man. Um, at church, by the way. And then as soon as he got done doing that, Peter's like, hey, can you come see my mother-in-law? And I don't know what all that's about, but that's exactly how it reads. So if you want to read uh, early in Mark. And last week we looked at a scripture where Mar Martha and Mary had Jesus at their home. And this week I want to look at another time where Jesus was there in John chapter 12. So turn with me to John chapter 12. And we're going to just look at just a little passage here, and then we're going to finish up. John chapter 12, and, and I can tell you for a fact that Jesus, he knows, he speaks all of the love languages fluently. Jesus, he speaks gift giving. He, he gets us. And so I want to look at this. John chapter 12, 
uh, starting in verse 1. Uh, look at it with me. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was, the one who Jesus had raised from the dead. And so they gave a dinner for him there. Martha was serving them, as usual. Lazarus was one of those reclined at the table with him. And then Mary took a pound of perfume, pure and expensive nard, and anointed Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair so that the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. And then one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was about to betray him, said, you know, why wasn't this perfume sold for, sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Well, he didn't say it because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And he, would, uh, he was in charge of the money bag, and he would steal part of the money that was put in there. When Jesus answered and said, you know what, leave her alone. She has kept it for the day of my burial. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. You know what, the, what? This is a perfect example of somebody with this love language of gift giving and receiving. Because this gift was valuable. Okay, this gift was valuable. More valuable than Rembrandt toothpaste. I mean, it's, it's really expensive. And, you know, this is not something that just people had in, on their shelf. They didn't just have a whole selection of expensive perfumes around. It, it was costly to get. It was costly to make. It was costly to purchase. Everything about this was costly. And so uh, I think this challenges us because here's why. The giving of this gift from her heart to the Lord Jesus is a valuable gesture of love. And this challenges me and it challenges us to be sacrificial in our devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this may not be valuable to you, but when my grandfather died, I was able to get uh, my grandmother's Bible does anybody have your grandparents' Bible? A lot of you do, yes. Man, what a, a, a something you can't even put a price on it of how valuable these things are. And, and the, the emotional exchange and gesture of her pouring out this expensive perfume and then using her hair to dry his feet, this gesture of love, this gift that she gave, I think Jesus saw that. And he could see the value in this gift. And I think this challenges us because you and I, oftentimes, I'll tell you about me. I don't know about you. Here's what I do oftentimes. Oftentimes, I will give the Lord and other people, I will give to them out of my excess. If I have some left or if I have enough or if it's not really going to hurt me or if I'm not going to feel it, then I will give or I will help. And this wasn't the case here. And I think it should challenge us. Some people who don't speak this love language, like Judas, man, he is looking at this like a waste. It is a waste of money. Don't do that. If you recall at the Last Supper when Jesus uh, told Judas to go do what he was going to do quickly, they thought he was telling Jesus to go take care of the poor because Jesus is just known as a giving person. He's known as a gift giver. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, Let each one of us give as he has purposed in his heart, not begrudgingly or under compulsion, because God loves a what? Cheerful giver. You said it because you know what it says. John, uh, in verse 7, Jesus challenged this idea that this wasn't the appropriate use of this expensive perfume because he just said, leave her alone. She was loving Jesus by giving this gift, and Jesus didn't see her use of this perfume as a waste. He received it, and he received her love and her action of doing this, and God desires for you to give yourself to him. And here's the problem I run across a lot as a pastor. People look at pastors and, and, and worship leaders and, and, 
and, and Christians sometimes, and they think, oh, man, they've got it all together. You know what? That's a lie. That is a lie. Nobody has it together. As long as we are in this flesh, and as long as there's a war between our flesh and our spirit, nobody's got it together. What God wants from you and me, sir, is He wants us to give ourselves to Him, but a lot of times we think that there's no value in us, and so He would not want anything that has no value, but that's a lie. That's not the case. Do this in remembrance of me. You know why He done what He done? It was because He sees and He knows the value that you have to Him. Amen? You have value. I want you to say, I have value. Listen, that's the truth. We need to give ourselves to Jesus, but a lot of times we find it really hard when we think we're not worth anything. But Jesus proved how much he thought we were worth at the cross. And God desires for you to give yourself to him. I was talking with uh, somebody who was having a really hard time with, uh, with self-worth. And they were a Christian. Fortunately, and so I got to tell her, you know what? Your value is not based upon what other people say about you, what other people think about you. It's not about what society says about you. It's not a what about the coworkers say about you. It's not about your value is not even based upon what you think about you. A person's worth is based upon what our Creator says about us. And what He done is showed us that we all have value, we all have worth, and we all are valuable to Him, and He wants us to give ourselves to Him. He wants to receive us. And not just receive us to be our friend and our buddy, but He wants to be our Savior. He wants to forgive us of all of our sin. He wants to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He wants to make our sin, though it was as scarlet, as white as snow. All of those things. So we give ourselves to Him, and He gives back to us. And that's what He done on the cross. He purchased the right to do those things. As our worship team comes up, I'm just going to close with this. You're worth the Father giving that ultimate gift, His one and only Son, to pay our sin debt, to pay your debt. Here's the truth. The only appropriate response that you and I should have to what Jesus has done for us is to, A, admit to God that you have sinned against Him and admit that you deserve judgment because of your sin, and B, to believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again to pay for the sin debt of those that believe. And C, here's where people get hung up. C is confess it publicly. You know, Christianity, that's, man, what Jesus did on the cross, that's something to share. That's not something to hide under. I'm just going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes just for a quick invitation. Maybe you're here this morning, and maybe you would say, Pastor Jason, I... I feel right now that I need to give myself to Jesus Christ. If you've never done that before, I'm going to ask you if you would like to do that and receive the full forgiveness of your sins right now. I just want to pray a special prayer for you. Would you let me know that that's what you want to do by raising your hand up high? Go on once. Go on twice. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus. Whatever convictions you've laid on our heart, help us to act on them and you be faithful to take care of the problems. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your salvation. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would y'all stand with us?
what we come to you right now, I'm praying in the name of Jesus that you would just work a true miracle in Blake's life. God, I thank you for bringing him into our church. Thank you for bringing him into our lives. God, I pray that you would just heal his body, Lord, and, and take this step away from him. Lord, I pray that you would bless the doctors as they are working with him. And Lord, that you would just make everything as easy and comfortable as possible. And Lord, again, Lord, we just pray that through this, that you would be glorified. That Lord, that we can have a, that he can have a testimony to share, Lord, that, that, that can bring others to you and bring others to come to know you and, and uh, to have a relationship with you. Lord, we love you and thank you so much for what you do and for what you're going to do. In your name we pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, uh, you have given us zero reason in, in the history of all the work that you've done. You've given us no reason not to trust you. Lord, we lift up Lord Blake to you. Lord, we love him. We thank you so much for the joy that he brings to so many people's lives. Lord, we ask you uh, that you would just uh, intervene in, in this uh, situation as we pray. So many countless times already, Lord, we just know that you have done things like this for so many other people. And, and we just ask you to remember your goodness, remember remember the occasions that you healed people and that you helped the people get through things like this. Just remember those things, and we ask you, Lord, to do this for you. We just pray that all his needs will be met, and Lord, again, like Crystal said, that he would have a good testimony. Lord, thank you, and we just ask you to be with this family, too, Lord, as they're right there with you. And, and we just pray that you would do this for them. That's what we want, and we ask you in Jesus' name. Thank you. I just, you guys have been in our home church since we've been here, and y'all took him on when he was little, and he's learned so much. We met a little boy. What was his name? We met a little boy. They do that really doesn't in our family. And the first thing when they were playing, the little boy said to Blake, he said, Could you come here to God? And Blake just looked at him like he was crazy. And he goes, You don't know God. <laughs> and when the boy said it again, he goes, You should pray to God. He says, If people pray to God, miracles happen. And he learned all that from you guys. So thank you so much. And thank you for everything. That's what I can. Couldn't have found a better home church than the one we found. Is anybody else welcome? Thank you. Thank you, God. We thank you so much for this family, is what they have taught us, and the blessings that they have given to us. We know Jesus, that you love those children, <clears throat> and you always tell them that they can come to your table. But we thank you that Mike has that, that knowledge. And that gift of knowing and loving you. We also ask for strength for our new dad because this is one of the hardest things that they'll ever have to face as they watch Blake go through this. But we know, Lord, that your hand, your peace, your healing can be miraculous. And we come and ask for this gift of peace and love and calm and strength. Come down now through your Holy Spirit and rest upon me through this whole thing. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Anybody else like to pray?
dismissed. Go in the name of the Lord. Thank you. 